G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another episode of Wasteland Survival. So, in the last episode we finished off by getting the majority of the um, hangar complete. I was about to say garage, but it's a hangar. I keep getting the two mixed up. So anyway, yeah, we mostly got all of this done. So now there are a couple of things left to do. So obviously we need to finish off these airtight hangar doors. We need to finish off these air vents in the roof. So I think I'm going to put some there, I'm going to put some there, and then I'm going to put some there as well. So all up we'll have about nine air vents, and I think that should be more than enough. So, and then there is another thing that I want to do with this, um, these airtight hangar doors, which is something that might be very useful for you guys um, in your uh, particular save, I would say. So, in this particular save, it's probably not going to be immensely useful. But, it will certainly be useful if you find yourself on a planet where there is no oxygen available in the atmosphere. So, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up timer blocks that will actually control these doors. So, when we go to open these doors, um, and I'll have a sensor so that when we walk up to the doors, um, the air vents will depressurize the hangar and then after a set period of time the doors will then open and then when we exit the proximity of the sensor the doors will close and then the air vents will switch um, back on and repressurize the hangar so I'll show you how to do that a little bit later but first what we need to do is we actually need to hook up all of these air vents to the rest of the conveyor system now as I mentioned in the last episode what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to make the air vents um, feed off probably two of these um, these uh, what do you call them conveyors sitting on the back of these connectors so what I'll do is I'll just run a conveyor tube up through the the roof um, well through the side of the wall and then we'll go to the roof and then we'll go to the center point here so what I'll do is I'll just grind out this block just so that I know roughly where I am and we'll just do the same thing as we did in the last episode and we'll just partially grind down these blocks just so that I know roughly where I need to go with these conveyor tubes and then from there that will give me an idea of where I need to drill the wall out and the roof and yeah we can start laying these tubes so let me get onto the ground here and then activate my drill because for some reason if I activate it when I'm floating in midair it does that weird thing where it goes up in in the air and I suspect it has something to do with the recoil mechanics that the, were introduced in the last update but that is just kind of a suspicion um, but it it does seem a little bit strange how it only seems to happen after that update and it's it's almost as if the drill is stuck in some kind of a recoil mode I, I would say so let's see if we can get this relatively straight so have we yep yeah, alright so now I should just be able to go straight ahead and we should hopefully reach so is this relatively straight yeah I think it's not too bad um, and then we should at some stage reach those incomplete blocks there we go alright so now we can just kind of go from this point and we can just go straight across and then we can connect up to the rest of the conveyor system alright well that is everything drilled out so you can see that I've got um, tunnels that run to each of these points where these air vents will be and through the center here we have um, our main conveyor line and then again this will be the center um, air vents in the center pillars and this tunnel here that leads back to these conveyor junction has been laid so there's one there and there is another one here so as I said before I'm probably going to have two tubes kind of running to a um, conveyor junction here so then what I'll do is I'll probably place my vents in here 
but I won't actually run a junction here just because the air vent will kind of seal around this bit here and I don't really need to put a junction there so I'm just going to use standard old tubes. So I think the first thing I need to do is lay down my air vents but I'm not going to lay down all of them. I think what I'll do for now is I'll just lay down the edge ones. So I'll withdraw as many as I can. So I think that should hopefully be enough, but we shall see. So I think on the outer edge, I'm going to arrange them like that. So we'll have one there, another one there, one there obviously, and then we'll go over to the other side, we'll spin this around, put one there, another one there, and another one there. And let's see if we can weld these up. Fantastic. All right, so it seems like we had enough components to do all of that in one hit. So now we've got to make a start on um, actually laying out the tubes. So what I'll probably do though with um, these ones in the center is I'll probably orientate them in whatever... I, I guess, honestly, it doesn't really matter which way I orientate them, but I'll probably just orientate them all like that way, just so that it's like kind of consistent and it like looks right. So what I'm going to do now is start by laying down these conveyor tubes but before I do that I think I'm going to fix these sections here so I'm just going to re-weld these back up which shouldn't take me too long only a couple of seconds I'm hoping so yep that looks really nice and then at some stage obviously I'm going to have to fix this as well so now what I need to do is withdraw a whole bunch of components for some steel tubes or conveyor tubes I should say. Before we do that though I need to get some more jetpack fuel because it seems like I'm running low and I would actually like to be proactive with my jetpack fuel for once in this series. <laughs> um, although we will see how long that lasts. Um, that's probably going to be a temporary thing because I'm always running out of fuel. In fact, I could probably get a shirt made saying jetpack low and yeah, that would kind of be merch for the series, but I'm not going to do that. Um, although it would be funny. Um, Alright, so let's put a tube there and then we will run another tube like this and then we'll do the exact same thing on the other side and it seems like I'm running low on energy. Maybe that's another thing that I should have done. Maybe I should have actually recharged my batteries, but oh well, you get that. So I suspect I will run out of um, components for these tubes before my batteries run out. So I'll probably do that the next time I go outside into the hangar. All right, so let's go and recharge. And I'll probably just use the ship that's here because I can't be bothered going all the way downstairs to get to the med room. So that should be fine. Awesome. All right, well, we're fully charged. So now let's continue on with these tubes. Um, I don't think I actually have any left on me, so we'll just withdraw what we can. All right, and let's continue this on. Now, obviously, I can't get through those holes in the wall so we're just going to have to kind of use these center holes here so um, let's just run this tube from here to that point and then from this point we're going to put a junction and then run another tube to this point and then to these outer points here although maybe I should I think what I need to do first though is I need to run the tubes from these ones because Otherwise, if I run the tube to this point, I'm not going to be able to get to this point unless I drill another hole in the roof. And I don't really want to do that. And it will kind of just make me waste more time. So I think this is probably the best method is to do it like this. So, and I should be able to do a bit of a cheeky shuffle here and get to both of those at the same time. And I can, which is fantastic. And then we can put in a curved one like... Ah, I always struggle when I'm at angles here because it, yeah, it doesn't really want to spin the way it usually does when you're facing straight towards it. 
So let's um, run these back to this first one here and it seems like we've run out of components. Alright, well let me go ahead and finish all this conveyor system up off camera and then once we've done that I will see you at the other side. Okay, well that's the last conveyor done, so all this stuff is now hooked up. So now what I need to do is just seal back all these access blocks that I've pulled out of the wall. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so the first one I need to do is this one. I'm going to make it this light grey colour. I've got to do this one as well. Weld these up. Do the same over here for this one. And then we got to weld up this one in the roof, which is where the conveyor is that is joining these two tubes together. And then finally, just need to fill in these bits here. So just these light armor tips and the same over this side. And you would never even know it was there. Very nice. Okay, so the final thing I need to do here is just add a tube on the end of each of these conveyors. So let's go ahead and withdraw the components for those. So we will need three tubes and then we will need three air vents if we can fit them on our inventory. And I think we can. So let's put the tubes in place, but I'll make them this color, even though you won't see them, but it will make me feel better. One there. And then another one there and then finally we will place one there now we need to place in our vents uh, wrong block this one all right so we'll place them like that I guess um, like that and then like that and we'll quickly weld those up and Then the final one. Fantastic. Okay, so now I wonder if I have renamed the vents throughout the base. I don't think I have. I think I've just named them all air vent. So cargo warehouse air vent, hallway air vent. Um, how many air vents do we have? I said we had nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 so room pressure 100% um, so I think it's these ones here these couple here um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename these to the hangar air vents and I'm going to create a group and that's going to make our life 10 times easier when we go to actually set up our automatic airlock so let me just quickly rename all of these Okay, that is all of the air vents renamed, so let's just go ahead and create a group. So, uh, hangar air vent. Alright, cool. So, then obviously this group will be the hangar air vents. Now, I might actually make this the um, base hangar air vents because I'm pretty sure I've actually set something up like this pretty similar before on the Atlas and judging by the amount of votes at the time that I've recorded this I think that is the ship that we're gonna end up building in this world so I don't want these things to kind of interfere with each other and in fact I really should rename all of these and put base in front of them as well so let me just quickly do that as well Okay, that's all done. So they are all named Base Hangar Air Vent and they should not interfere with any of the other groups on the ships that I have. So now the final thing that we need to do before we can set up this whole contraption is we actually need to complete all of these airtight hangar doors. Now the easiest way that I find to do these is, and you, if you have a look at each of these hangar doors, um, they contain 250, well, 350 steel plates each. The rest of the stuff isn't too bad. You can kind of do that by hand. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the welding ship with as many steel plates as what I can possibly fit into it. 
and I'm going to use that to put all the steel plates in and then the rest of the stuff I will just kind of do that by hand so let's find the ship and let's put in as much as what we can and I may yeah so even I think we might even go through like maybe oh yeah maybe two or three loads of um, steel plates even in this ship just welding these airtight hangar doors they actually use a ton of resources so I guess it kind of means that they are you know really resilient so there is that but um, yeah hopefully we don't get any reavers trying to YOLO into the hangar so and we don't really need that extra protection that all these steel plates provide us so yeah there is that but um, I guess it's kind of good to know that it's there so and as you can see doing this using this ship is just an absolute ton easier than trying to do this all by hand so I have actually done things like this uh, by hand before and it's just so time consuming and it's just really not worth it so yeah this is the method that I found was the easiest for me and yeah as you can see we have already run out of steel plates and we didn't even really do that many um, we probably did what um, maybe a third if that like maybe even just a quarter so let's see if I can line this up yeah, that's not too bad right let's grab some more steel plates um, Jeez, we're actually running pretty low, so I might need to start manufacturing some more steel plates. I think doing these airtight hangar doors is going to clean out my supply completely. So that means that doing this entire thing has cost us 38,000 steel plates, which is an enormous amount of steel plates. Um, although, when we go to build the large ship, then we're going to need a lot more than that. So, how many iron ingots do I have? Um, iron ingot. So, I think the last time I checked, 19,000. No, surely we have more than that. Um, assembler 1. Ah, 594,000 and then 19,000. So, yeah, we should be able to manufacture a fair few more of those so I'll select the base assemblers here and I'll just manufacture like another 50,000 I guess and yeah 353,000 iron so hang on um, how many iron ingots did I say we had F uh, 590 351 all right so we got plenty of iron ingots um, to do all of that so that's fine so all right let's um, see if we can't get all of these airtight hangar doors done with the next batch of steel plates that I have loaded into the weld ship so I think we should be okay because I've already done the majority of these ones um, in an earlier episode when I was thinking about doing this and maybe not doing it so I wasn't exactly sure which route I was going to go and if I actually was going to seal this up um, so let's just park this up and it seems like I probably have a fair few steel plates left over but you know what you can never have enough and I would rather have too many and not need them than to need them and not have them right so now we need to basically go ahead and finish off all of these so you can see that all the rest of the components are missing so what I'm going to do is just right click on about this eight times and then we'll go up to the cargo container or the nearest cargo container and we will withdraw all of that so that'll let us do at least the first eight of these things and yeah as you can see this is much faster than doing all of this by hand so and then we'll go back and then we'll weld the rest of them up and I think yeah so and then we just repeat that process until we get all of these done 
Alright, well that is all the airtight hangar doors done. So now what I gotta do is just um, kind of close these doors and then see if everything actually seals. So let me just access the control panel through this connector here and we will find the hangar doors. Um, that should be all of them. And I will close those. And hopefully that should be all of them. And yes it is. And I'll also need to rename these as well because they will be, um, yeah, I don't want them to interfere with anything else. All right, cool. So this room is pressurizable, if that is even is a word. Um, well, yeah, I guess we can pressurize this room, so that is good. Um, all right, so now that we have confirmed that, now let's move on to actually creating this automatic um, hanger type deal that I was talking about uh, at the start of the episode so let's go ahead and open all of these and what I well actually before we go any further um, I'm really not sure which color I want to make these things I think I'll probably go with this color um, I do kind of like the idea of the hangar doors being um, the proper color so um, maybe that's what I can do hang on so is that did I select the right color there? All right, so let's make them. All right, that's weird. Hang on. What color is this? Yeah, so. Oh no, that's not what I want to do. This game is trolling me. All right, so let's. Can I get under here and select this color? Um. All right, let me. Hang on. This is weird. Why can't... Ah, oh, that's alright. You know what? I'll worry about that later. That's not important. Alright. So, now what I want to do is... Well, I guess the first thing I need to do is set up a sensor. So, what I'll do is I'll make the sensor this color. And honestly, the color of the sensor really doesn't matter. And we will try and place it in the center. So how tall is this room? It's one, two, three, four, five blocks. So one, two, and I believe that will be the center there. So uh, let's withdraw the components for one of these things. Let's place one sensor there. Let me just make sure that does look like the center of the room. And yes, it does. Right, so let's go into this sensor and we will call this the hangar airlock sensor. And we will... So I want to show this block on the HUD and then we're going to go into info and we're going to show the sensors field of range. So now we have... Um, so now we have to kind of figure out its constraints. So I'm pretty happy with this constraint here. Um, so basically what's going to happen is when we enter this sensor's range, the air vents are going to depressurize the hanger, and then after the, it has finished depressurizing the hanger, then it is going to open these doors, and then we can exit. And then once we exit out of the sensor's field of range, the opposite will occur. So the doors will close and then the air vents will go ahead and pressurize the hangar again. So, and as I said, this isn't really 110% necessary because um, oxygen is available on this planet and we can just pull it from the atmosphere um, by using the air vents themselves. Um, so it's not really a big deal, but still, I think it's going to be a pretty cool feature to um, show you guys how to do. All right, so uh, how wide is this hanger? So it is, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So nineteen blocks wide. So now how far can this go? So let me just kind of work that out. 
Right, so that needs to be 47.5 meters long. So, um, hang on. Let's go into the sensor's field of range here. So the left extent is that way, and the right extent is that way. So we'll worry about that later, but the front extent, I want to set that to 47.5. The back extent, 0.1. Um, the top extent, we want to go two and a half blocks, which is 5.25 meters. So the bottom extent is 5.25 and the top extent is, no, it's 6.25, 6.25 um, and the bottom extent 6.25. Right, so it should, yeah, all right, cool. So it goes all the way to the other side of the hangar. And now what I want it to do is extend out to about that point. So um, I think I need to set it to maybe 10 meters. So let's see what it looks like at 10 meters. So let's find the left extent and we'll set the left extent to 10 meters. And how's that look? Uh, no, it needs to be more. So let's try 12.5. Um, actually, in fact, is it 12.5? No, it needs to be about 15, so let's set it to about 15, so left extent, 15.0. Alright, cool. I think that looks pretty even. It should be. Um, I can't be bothered working out the exact maths of it, I just want to kind of get this done. Um, Alright, so, now our sensor is set up. So now what we need is we need four timer blocks. Now there probably is a better way to do this. But I'm just not exactly sure how to do it that way. So what I'm going to do is use timer blocks to do this. So what I'll do is I'll probably end up placing my timer blocks in the wall here. Um, is that the center? Yes, it is. So I'll probably place one, one there. And well, I guess I could just place two timer blocks there. Actually, yeah, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. Um, let's just place two timer blocks in the wall oh actually i can't because the sensor is at that point so maybe instead what we'll do is we will place our timer blocks here on the outside of the hangar so let's see if we can do that and then i don't need to worry about if they are going to be airtight which i don't even think i need to anyway because i don't i i'm pretty sure that um, timer blocks actually are airtight so let's find these in our G menu because I don't use these things very often so we'll add that to the yep alright so what I'll do is I'll change the color to this color and I'm actually going to spin them around and orientate them like this because I don't really like the blue and green lights that are emitted from these things so, yeah, alright, well, I guess it would kind of help if I withdrew the components for these things, right? Alright, awesome. So, let's go ahead and place down four of these. So, one, two, three, and four. Right. So, and then let's go ahead and weld these up. Right, now, let's go into the control panel. And I've just noticed that my fuel is empty once again. And luckily I noticed before we actually ran out when I was trying to fly around and do stuff. Now, as I was saying, let's go into the control panel. Let's find our timer blocks. So we will call this timer one and we will call this um, depressurize. Uh, SE. Depressurize um, base. Uh, I'll just call it that. Um, timer 1 depressurize. And then we'll call. Well, actually, I'll just copy this bit because that's the only bit I really need. We'll call this one timer block 2 and we'll call this um, open. Uh, base doors 
and then because I have this same timer set up on my last ship um, on one of my ships that I plan to build in this series so I want to kind of give them individual names so then we'll call this re pressurize um, actually I'll name that timer four I'll name this timer three and we will make this um, close base doors right okay so let's go back into the control panel and let's have a look at this so we've got timer one so the first timer will depressurize the second timer will open the base doors and then this timer will close the base doors and then this timer will repressurize the base doors so um, but what I need to do is I need to go to these timers so the first one I'm going to set that to a delay of zero zero one this delay here is going to be important this delay here for the closing of the doors isn't and I will tell you why in a moment now what I need to do is I need to figure out exactly how long it takes for these um, air vents to actually pressurize and depressurize this space so what I am going to do is I'm going to close the doors then I'm just going to get the stopwatch off my phone and I am basically going to time it using my timer and we will figure out exactly how long it takes for this um, space to actually pressurize so let's go ahead and pressurize this um, so to do that we will just close the hangar doors uh, hang on what am I doing so hangar doors um, oh I haven't actually created a group for them yet okay well that's alright then alright so let's close them and the moment these close and then the base starts pressurizing then I'm just gonna hit the go button on my timer and we're just gonna time this as close as we can so let's start the timer so it looks like it takes about six seconds although I think a better way to measure this would be to actually depressurize this space so what I can do to do that and okay so the reason why I'm saying that is because at the moment there actually is oxygen in the atmosphere of this planet so if we completely depressurize this space then it will become a vacuum so that will give us a true um, time on how long it takes to pressurize this space no matter what the current environmental conditions are so I hope that makes sense it makes sense to me but yeah let me know if it doesn't so we'll find our air vents so base hangar air vents and we will depressurize these and the moment I hit that button then I'm going to start my timer so then this should depressurize and of course it won't because the oxygen tanks are currently full um, hmm, interesting. Alright, you know what? I'm just going to set it for about 10 seconds, maybe 12 seconds. And we'll just hope that that's enough. This is probably a lot easier to demonstrate in space. Um, so, yeah, alright, that's alright. Let's just um, set that to 10 seconds. So, given that this, um, let's just say that this space takes 10 seconds to pressurize or depressurize so what we're going to do is we're going to find our timers and we're going to go back to the depressurize so that's going to be set to a delay of 0 0.1 this is going to set, be set to a delay of 10 seconds which it already is then this one is going to be set to a delay of 0 0.1 and then this will be set to a delay of 0 um, or 10 seconds so what we want to do is we want this um, depressurize so if we go into setup actions we find our groups and we will set the depressurize to Energy on low. so that's on timer number one now on timer number two what we're going to do and before we actually do this we actually need to create a group for all of our hangar doors so hangar door let's find all of these let's call these the 
space, um, hangar, doors. We'll save that. Right, we'll exit out of that. We'll go back into the um, control panel. We'll find timer number two. And we will go to setup actions. And then what we will do is we will set the groups of the base hangar doors to open. And then on time, timer number three, we will go to setup actions, we'll go to groups, and we will set these to close. Um, the airtight hangar doors, and we will set them to close. Then on timer number four, which is the repressurized timer, we'll go to setup actions, and then what we will do is we will go to groups, and we will go to the air vents, and we will set the depressurize to off. Um, let me just check this one and make sure I set this one properly. Set up actions, depressurize on. Okay, so depressurize on will depressurize, and then depressurize off will um, remove all of the, or it will repressurize the room. Did I say that right? Hang on, okay, so this will depressurize. Let's just check that. Depressurize on, that's fine. Go to this one set up actions and you can tell that this one is depressurized off because the symbol the um, the background of that symbol is black so that means that it's going to turn that functionality off but there is one more thing that we need to do so on this first timer here we need to go set up actions and then we need to um, find our timers and what we need to do is we need to set this one to start um, yeah we don't want to go trigger now because that will just ignore the time limit that we've set for that and it will just trigger it straight away so and basically what that'll do is it will just depressurize and then open the door straight away which will fail to depressurize the space anyway so then what we need to do is we need to set this one here the close base doors we need to go back into setup actions then we need to find our timer number three and we need to, uh, no, sorry, timer number four, which is repressurize, and then we will hit start on that. So it's gonna close the doors, and then it's going to um, start the other timer block, which is number four. So let's go ahead and now let's set up our sensor to do the work for us. Now, what the sensor should do, so basically what we want this sensor to do is we'll go to setup actions and then um, this one here is when the sensor detects us and this box here is when the sensor does not detect us anymore so obviously in the first one we want to set timer one and we will set that to start and then after that we will set timer three and we will set that to start so now when i move back nothing should happen and these should actually get set to pressurize after about 10 seconds. So let's just hang around and make sure that's the case. Awesome. So you see, they've automatically now switched to pressurize. So they will go ahead and pressurize this space. So now, if we move into the sensors range, these will switch to depressurize and they will pull all of the air out of this space but they can't because all of our oxygen tanks are full and then after 10 seconds these doors should open and voila they open awesome all right let's just confirm that this works one more time let's move out of the sensors range and then let's just see what happens so you'll see the doors close and after 10 seconds these should change to pressurize and they do fantastic so that is how you set up an automatic automatically pressurizing and depressurizing hanger so I hope that was really helpful for you guys um, yeah so it took me a fair while to figure that out and if you guys do have a better method of um, actually making that work then please by all means let me know now, one final thing we need to do is we need to go into this sensor here and we need to go to um, what it will detect. So I'm going to turn the audible proximity alert off. Um, detect players, I want that Energy on. Low. Um, detect small ships, I want that to be on. Um, and I want detect enemies to be off. 
detect enemy off. Yep. Okay, cool. So now what we should be able to do is jump into this ship and we unlock this and then I'll just wait for this thing to cycle. Well, no, actually, let's just test this because chances are we're probably going to be, um, you know, doing this type of stuff. Uh, so let's see what happens. So now the hangar doors should open up for us eventually. The only problem with doing it this way is that it is a little bit clunky and it is a little bit slow, but that's all right. I think it still kind of works pretty well. So now we just pull the ship out. Now the doors will close immediately and then 10 seconds after that the air vents will change to pressurize. Alright, fantastic. And in fact, you could probably even remove the, um, the delay on the fourth timer block because if these air vents get set to pressurize it doesn't really matter if the door is already open, you know what I mean? So I think that should be fine. So in fact, nah, that's all right. I'll just leave it. It doesn't really matter too much. All right, so what to do next? All right, well, I think there are definitely a fair few things that I want to do to this hangar. So first of all, I want to change the color of these airtight hangar doors, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. So I'll probably figure that out off camera. I think I need to do it when they're closed, but I'm not exactly sure. But one other thing that I want to do is I kind of want to build a ramp system that goes up to these ships. I don't really need to because, you know, obviously I've got the jetpack enabled in this room, but I think it will just kind of dress up the hangar a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. So what I'll do is I'll withdraw the components for a couple of, um, uh, what are these catwalks and then also some stairs as well so and then I want them to be that color so actually no I want them to be this color so we'll make them that color there all right cool so I think what I'll do is I'll start off with a set of stairs that goes up like that um, actually no that's in the wrong spot let's grind that away I'll start with a set of stairs that go there and then I want to create a catwalk that goes this way. So I'll use the corner ones even though I don't really need the, um, the railings to be along the wall. But as I've mentioned a couple of times before, I do kind of like this, um, how, they, how they are made basically. So now obviously what uh, I think I should be able to actually put some stairs onto these yeah I can do that but I think when I go ahead and try and put some catwalks on the end of these then I won't be able to so what but what I want to do as well is I kind of want to have them uh, suspended in the air across um, the side of the ship like that and one way that we can kind of make them do that is I can grab myself some of these neon tubes and I think I'll put some there and I'll put another lot there and then I'll basically do the same on the other side so we'll place some there there and then place some there and then I can't place them there because the ships in the way at the moment so I'll have to kind of move it out of the way in a little bit um, and then we'll grab our catwalks and what we could do oh actually no sorry I need to actually place something to attach the catwalks to so what I'm gonna have to do is place down some of these little things so we'll place that there um, and I'll place another one on this side and then I should be able to place my catwalks down so if we grab our catwalks and we use that as the attachment point awesome so now we can place our catwalks down so then what I'll do here is I'll create an end piece or maybe I could do a corner piece like that uh, yeah I think I might go with that so obviously I've got to move the ship out of the way before I I can place this extra block here and this block but the collision shouldn't really make too much of a difference when I go to park the ship. Now, 
I have thought about this quite a little bit and I could place another one here on the other side. Let me just turn my lights off. I could place another one here on the other side but I don't think I'm going to do that because it's just going to make it too difficult to try and get to the ship and since I'm going to be flying the ship out of the hangar and then back in this way then I will place the ramps on this side for each one of these connectors so obviously there will be a ramp on this side and then there will be a ramp on this side and then this side again so uh, let me just quickly go ahead and weld all this up all right well that's everything welded up with the exception to this little one here at least everything that I can weld up without the ship being in the way so I think that's going to look pretty good um, at least these things yeah as I was trying to use these things before when I was doing the staircases out in the or down in the garage but I think these actually look pretty good when it's um, up against just these catwalks so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually move this ship out of the way because I want to finish welding up all this stuff at least for this one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replicate that same design for all the other connectors um, so let's just turn the thrusters off here and then we can go ahead and we can place these blocks so let me just make sure that I've actually got enough components to place all of these and that should hopefully be enough so what I need to do is place some here and then I'll place another set there and then I'll find my neon tube number one and we will place another one of those down there like that so let's weld these up and weld that up as well awesome so I think that looks pretty good um, what I could do as well actually is I could create a catwalk that goes underneath the ship but I'm not sure if I really want to do that. Let me just change my view here. Um, so let's try and park it up. Now the reason why I don't know if I really want to put some catwalks underneath the ship is because it might just make it that little bit too hard to actually dock it. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure about that, but I guess I'll just have to kind of figure that out as we go. A um, little bit of a weird voxel glitch there I don't know what that's about um, yeah so I could place a catwalk here that goes underneath but I don't know I might um, maybe I will do that uh, the question is will this staircase fall down if I do that um, that is the question hmm maybe what I can do to try and pin the stairs down is I can place one of those and another one of those so that when I go and grind this out the stair is actually attached to something so let's just try this out and see what it looks like um, so I might just grab a couple more components while I'm at it because you can never have enough right um, then I'll place the corner one here uh, but it's not going to let me because the ship is in the way all right so we're gonna have to move the ship again so let's disconnect it let's go forward a bit let's experience the weird voxel glitches once more and i'll just let it chill in the air for there for a little bit right now we can place our blocks down so what i'll do here is i'll just place one with the railing on the outside and again i don't really need the railing on the outside um because it, you know it's up against the wall but it will kind of match with everything else so maybe we'll put the same amount of catwalks in here or maybe I will end it just one block sooner so it has a bit more of an interesting shape so we can do something like that so let's just um, weld all these up or at least as much as we can with what I have on my person at the moment and it looks like I might have enough although they'll probably be famous last no actually we do and in fact what I could do is I could even place a set of stairs on the other side just so that it looks um, just that little bit nicer so 
what do I have to do here? So I'll have to place like a pillar or something just to pin this up. All right, that'll do. And let's grind this down. And let's add another set of stairs that go on this side. So grab our stairs, place them there. Then we'll grab um, these blocks here. Our catwalks, I'll place one there. Then I'll grab another catwalk like that, another one like that, and then another one like uh, that. Awesome. All right, so that should look pretty cool. So let's weld these up. And I really don't think I have enough components for these, but well, maybe I do actually. Let's grab the components for the stairs. All right, now let's weld that up. And I may even grind this back. And the question is, do I have enough components to actually place some of these on this side? So I think I should be okay. And actually, it's pretty good that I put it there because then I'm not interfering with these ones here. So that's pretty cool. Um, I actually didn't plan that. So that kind of just worked out pretty nicely. Um, let's put in our little bits like that and I wonder if I can place them on this side uh, yes I can awesome weld those up and let's weld this up and finally let's weld that up all right so I think that looks pretty good um, so we'll go ahead and we'll place these for all the rest of them but first let me just kind of test this out and see how good this actually works so just to kind of give it a proper test, I'll actually take the ship out of the hangar and I'll come back into the hangar like I'm trying to park it not like I normally would. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think I'm going to reduce the amount of time that I have to wait at the doors for them to open for me. What I might do is I might just change it to the amount of time that it takes for the doors to actually close. Alright, so now what I'll do is I'll just enter into the hangar and I guess this probably isn't the best test because I've kind of got the ship at the right level when I exited the garage and I didn't really change it so I guess there is that but what we can do is try and get this lined up and yeah it's not too bad it's not fantastic but I think it works relatively well and then what we should be able to do is walk up under here and just inspect the ship, you know. And like I said, none of this stuff is really necessary, but I do think it will kind of break things up a little bit. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this structure for the rest of the hangar. And yeah, we'll kind of go from there and see how it all looks. Okay, well that is everything welded up and... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if I like it. <laughs> After all that effort, I'm not 110% sure. But, you know what? I'm just going to stick with it for now. And if I can think of something better, or, yeah, if I can think of a way to make it look a little bit better, then I will do that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, one of the other things that I do want to kind of do is I want to create some lighting around here. So, as is the tradition with most of this build, I want to kind of place some orange lights all along the bottom. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them... So, let's just see here. So, I could place one there... Um, and then another one there. So that's what one two three blocks apart And then let's just see if this kind of works out the same on this side So then that's one two three blocks apart again. Yeah, so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna play some Basically three blocks apart from each other and we'll see how we go with that uh, So I think that's right there one two three. Yep, yeah. and then well, actually, no, before I go too far, I've actually got to weld one of these up. And I need to figure out the offset of these. So, where's my control panel? Alright, let's use this cargo container. So, let's try and find the corner light that I just built. 
Um, hopefully we don't have any others. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the offset of this to five meters. All right, cool. So it looks like the offset is going that way, which is the way that I want it to go. So let's, um, well, actually, let's go ahead and place the rest of them. And then after that, we can go ahead and weld them up. So I want to spin it around like that so that then it maintains that offset to the side rather than above the light. Um, we'll place another one there, one there, uh, another one there. And then one there, one there, and finally one there. Okay, so now we've got to go ahead and weld all these up. Okay, so that's all of the lights done. So let's go ahead and color these. And let's set the offset of all of them. Um, well, I guess first what I need to do is actually change their names. So let's see if we can find our corner lights. Uh, corner light... So, I'm going to name these um, Hangar, Accent, Lights, 1. And then I will name all of the others accordingly. So, let's go ahead and do that. Alright, well they're all renamed now, so let's go ahead and let's start playing around with the settings for these lights. Although first, it looks like I need to get myself a bit of energy, so let's just jump into the cockpit here temporarily. And in fact, what I can do is I can actually um, change the settings of these lights from here. So let's look for Hangar Accent, and let's select all of those, and let's set the intensity... no. So first of all, let's set the offset, and you can see them all kind of moving outwards. So I want to set them to about 5 meters, so they're like kind of in the corners and underneath all of these catwalks. So then, I'll set the intensity to 1.2, I'll set the fall off to 2.0, I'll set the color. Now the color, what color do have I set the other accent lights? Let's just have a look because honestly it's been so long since I've done it. Alright, so 170 and 100. Alright, so uh, hanger accent light. Hang on, what? Oh, that was hallway accent light. Alright, so let's select all of these and it was 170 and 100. Now let's set the radius all the way up to 10 meters. Um, and the intensity is fine, everything else is fine. Alright, so let's exit out of the ship, and how does that look? Yeah, I think that looks tons better. So, I think it kind of makes this whole ramp system a little bit better as well, and a little bit more interesting, and maybe what I can do is I can even place some extra lights here on the corner to kind of further accentuate them. But that's okay, I'll kind of leave that for now. So the next thing that I want to do is, well, I need to fix that, but that's right. The next thing I want to do is, let's see if this cargo container is empty. Yeah, it is. So I want to get rid of this cargo container in the floor. Um, I want to get rid of that conveyor junction there. But first of all, let me get rid of everything that is on my person. And let's go ahead and get rid of this conveyor junction and let's replace that with a tube. So we'll do that. And what I, well, I mentioned this before, but what I want to do is I want to actually drill out this center and then I will place a catwalk over the top of that and then along the sides here I'll place my interior walls again. Um, so we're going to have to do a fair bit of grinding here, so I'm going to have to grind out all of these blocks here in the middle and then also all these blocks here on the side. Then I'm going to need to dig it out and yeah, so this might take me a little while. So yeah, I guess I'll see you once this is all done. Okay, so you can kind of see that I've drilled out a little bit of this tunnel, um, most of it. But obviously I need to kind of finish it. Um, there's a couple of things I have, well, I, I need to do here. So um, first of all, what I want to do is I basically want to place 
a interior wall block on top of these conveyors here. So I want to place one there, um, and then I'll have one there, I'll have another one there, and then I'll also have some there and there and also there. And then they're going to run all the way along the side here like that. Um, but the only problem is that well, I, I guess it's not really a big issue, but I kind of want this conveyor tube to go all the way back. But I don't really want to put another conveyor here. So I think instead, what I'm going to do... Let me just get rid of everything that's on my inventory. And I'm actually going to grind this down and make this pipe go underneath to that conveyor there. So what we'll do is we'll grind this out, grind that out... Um, then I'll drill underneath here and I'll actually go ahead and place the tube down here and then underneath the other tube um, except I might have to go down one block further because on the floor so this space here will be occupied by a interior wall all the way along the bottom as will be these walls here so um, let's go ahead and grind down one more actually and can I drill this this far down I don't know um, all right I might just leave it like that because I'm not sure how close we are to um, getting through these voxels and into the garage so and I really don't want to break through and make a hole in the garage that would be Yes, um, exactly what I do not want to do. So, let's find a... Hang on. I'm talking and I'm kind of losing concentration. So, uh, let's grab some tubes here. Grab another one like that. And then we'll place another curved tube like that. So then, I should be able to weld these up. Hopefully I have enough components. Although, I think I have one extra tube. Yeah, I do. So, let me just weld that up. So, I'll withdraw the components for that. In fact, I'll grab a couple more. I don't have any interior plates or construction components. Ah, damn it. Um, so, let's build a thousand of those, and a thousand of those, and then we'll build a further 5,000 of each. But, that should hopefully give me enough to build what I need to now. So, and I'll build 3,000 of those just because why not. Um, cannot withdraw. Oh, of course. Because this is no longer connected. What am I thinking? So I probably didn't even need to manufacture all those parts, but that's alright. Alright, so now it's connected. Um, and then now I should still be able to place my interior walls down here like that. So, as I said before, we're going to have some interior walls like that. Um, darn it. I keep forgetting to grab resources to build all these items. So, as I was saying, we're going to have to have an interior wall like that. Another one there. And then another one kind of there. And then there. And then we will have another interior wall there like that um, except I can't place it because it's not actually attached to anything so I'll just have to place another one there just so that I can attach it to something right now I can place it down so yeah um, that's basically how I'm gonna fix that issue so now what I need to do is I need to drill out all this excess voxel so that I can then place down all these interior walls and then also place down the interior walls on the floor as well. Now while I was gone before what I actually went ahead and done is I disabled the air vents because every time I was coming near this I was actually opening and closing the door and it was getting a little bit annoying and I've also turned off the sensor. I also found one other issue with this whole setup so if I come up to it and then exit really quickly, the door um, 
doesn't receive the command to close. So I think what I may have to do is create a fifth, um, yeah, basically create a fifth timer block that waits 10 seconds after and then attempts to close the door again. So, yeah, um, but you know, I mean, there might be a better way to do that, but um, yeah, I haven't quite figured out that yet. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and um, place down all these blocks and drill this stuff out, and then I will see you then. All right, guys, well, everything is now welded up, and this entire tube tunnel type of thing that I've done throughout the rest of the base is now finished um, with the exception to the upside down catwalks that I usually place above this here tube but I'm actually going to end the episode here just because we're kind of running out of time and so I'm going to finish the rest of this in the next episode also what we're going to do in the next episode is we're actually going to make a start on the landing pad for the atlas and yeah the results are pretty clear and it seems like everyone has voted for the atlas to be built so that is what i am going to build well at least i think th at the end of the day i think it was like 72 percent of the people wanted me to build the atlas and the remainder of the percentage of people wanted me to build the pilgrim i mean not the pilgrim sorry the pioneer so yeah we're going to go ahead we're going to do that so, a couple of things I need to finish in this hangar is obviously I need to finish off these upside down catwalks that sit uh, in between these interior walls. I need to, I, well, I don't need to, but I also want to build a door here. So, I want to place one of these gates. Uh, so, I believe it is this one here. So, I want to place one of these gates here, and I also want to countersink that into the wall. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an airlock behind that. And then behind that, we're going to have another hallway very similar to the other um, hallway that's in the base. And then we're going to have an elevator that will go from the lower levels up to this level here so that we can access this without actually having to fly up here with our jetpack. Even though it's probably more convenient, I just think it will be a cooler design. So anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Wasteland Survival, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Wasteland Survival. So, if you like this content, then please consider leaving us a like and then subscribing to the channel so that you do not miss another episode. Anyway, guys, I will see you next time.